weather can be a factor. In the case of SARS, the situation was not so bad when it was extremely cold or hot, but somewhere in between, the epidemic seemed to spread fast. But it's not an absolute rule; it's only an assumption based on observation. At this stage, the best we can possibly do is to reduce human-to-human -human transmission by quarantining timely the identified sources of infection. I think China's way of building modular medical shelters is key to securing a win over the epidemic. Nucleic acid testing is not 100% accurate. There have been cases where the test failed to give a correct result. For instance, you may get the incorrect samples, or sample concentration is not good enough for the test. The samples could be contaminated during the test, and finally, the result can be false negative or false positive. That is to say, the nuclear acid tests are important, but the results don't accurately tell whether a person is infected or not. The test results need to be double-checked with clinical diagnosis. Vaccine is important to keep the epidemic at bay, but the complexity of the novel coronavirus should be fully assessed. It's no easy task to develop a vaccine for coronavirus. Some animals which received the SARS vaccine suffered from liver and spleen necrosis after second infection. It's hard to simply say if a vaccine is useful or not. Vaccine development is a rather complicated and time-consuming process. When people are talking face to face without masks, it's possible to get infected even within seconds. A droplet of saliva is enough for the transmission. The point is whether you are well protected, and whether the carrier is a strong spreader. Aerosols are a very important way of transmission for respiratory infectious disease. However, there are also specific conditions for aerosol transmission. It doesn't happen all the time. First, the size of the space is very important, as the density of the viruses is critical. When the viruses are floating in the open air, chances of aerosol transmission are slim. However, in a confined space such as an office or an elevator, it is easy to form aerosols that float in the air. If people don't protect themselves well, they may get infected by aerosol transmission in such an environment. The treatment we use this time is based on the medical advances we've made over the years. The hormone therapy is rarely used, or only in small doses. Therefore, it is unlikely to cause other complications. Now, many patients are in good condition after recovery. The influx of people can increase the risk of cross-infection, but what matters is not just the number of people, but the distance between people. For example, if people communicate at a distance of 1 to 1.5 meters just like we do, it is relatively safe. But if we're in a crowded subway car, the chances of getting infected grow. Therefore, make sure to keep your distance from others.